Hello, my dears, Daniela here, and welcome to another episode of the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. After our first interview with Jared and Elena Mitchell, we got so much positive feedback from people wanting to know more about their story. And when we looked back at that episode, it was really just like a bunch of friends joking around, telling their story. And that's how it always seems to be when I hang out with Jared and Elena. They're just truly, genuinely awesome people. But we decided that we wanted to do another episode that was really focused on teaching, on sharing, on helping estheticians And because the first one was very conversational and kind of just sharing their story, even though it was a really, really fun one. So I asked them to come back on. Jared is a master at Google, and he has worked with some of the top minds in the industry, those who have actually worked at Google before. So he knows quite a bit about the industry. And so he's got several tips for estheticians on how to get on that front page of Google. So I've got an interview for you. You also, if you are watching this video of this interview, please be gracious with us. This was a really interesting one. It's total mom life. Um, I was recording downstairs. We had to move upstairs. So there's a lot of transition in there. So just bear with us on this one. But there's a lot of great content And there's even an opportunity to learn more about Jared and Elena's course on Google, if that's something that is of interest to you. So without further ado, let me go ahead and play that interview with Jared and Elena. All right. I am back with Jared and Elena Mitchell, my favorite spa power couple, as I like to call you guys. And we had such a great response from the last podcast episode that you were on. I think it was really fun for people to get to see the personalities behind your business and really get to know who you are because you're real people um, that have accomplished amazing things. But today we're going to get more into a specific training, specifically about Google and because I know that Google has been instrumental for you guys in building your business. You do a lot of work on there and you've got some awesome tips to help estheticians on how they can move up in the rankings by using Google, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think like we get asked often, you know, how did you do what you do with right. the 70 square foot room all the way up to the multiple seven figure businesses And for us, it was a long time ago, but we did start with Google. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting when we started diving back into um, what is the state of local search and talking to certain experts we know. We noticed that Google still has about an 85% market share on all search in the U.S. And that 46% of those are local. And what's crazy is basically 75% of the users never scroll past the first page. I don't. Yeah, it's very rare if I do. I really can't have to not be able to find what I'm looking for to be like, really? Because it's psychological. Even if it's not, you think that whoever is on the first is the best. Exactly. Why would you go past that? And it could be like the most amazing spa in the world or most amazing esthetician could be on page five, but you would never know because you wouldn't get there. Exactly. So we thought Google, this was, people were asking us, how do we do, this is where you need to start if you haven't done anything, is to start with Google. I would say so. I mean, and the best thing is it's basically free. And a lot of people don't even know you can build your whole website on Google and they'll host it for free. It doesn't look super hot, <laughs> but it's free. And Google can avoid tends- that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, if you don't have any money yeah. and like started out kind of like we did, free can be good until you have some money. Yeah, and- we never, we have never thrown a lot of money at things unless we were confident, like we had tested and we had numbers to back up that this is something we should invest in. And to make up for the poor appearance, Google will actually favor their own websites and you do this within Google My Business, which essentially when you do local searches, which are mostly done on people's cell phones now, 
Um, right here, Google is up? kind of owning that page with what's called their knowledge graph, which is that like box that comes up that has like the map and the reviews, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, one thing, I mean, one thing that I always would say to estheticians, and I'm certainly not an expert in Google, but when there, a lot of estheticians are like, oh, paid advertising, you know, I'm gonna do Google pay per click or whatever. And I've never been a big fan of that because I love Facebook ads personally, but I feel like there's so many free opportunities, whether you're using Google reviews, claiming your listing, doing all this stuff, like why would you pay to be in front of yourself? Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, most most people that spend money on paid search don't even track it either, right? So, um, really. I one day I'm going to show you guys my tracking spreadsheet because <laughs> I have a real awesome. love for spreadsheets. <laughs> yes, that's what the and I think people sometimes in the beauty or certain industries I feel like they're like a women are some, afraid of numbers in some way, but like numbers and knowledge is power. You can make your decisions off of these stats, off the data. And we kind of challenge our staff and ourselves where to say, is this your intuition or do you have data to back it up? Yeah, totally. show me the numbers. Yeah, and intuition is fine, start there. Yeah. Like I, I don't create, I do not know how to make formulas and all of that kind of stuff. Annie does it for me. You know, yeah. like I have amazing people on my team that do it, right. but I'm like in hog heaven when Annie's like, here, look at this new spreadsheet that I made. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, I love a spreadsheet. <laughs> Get me a good graph, right? <laughs> Show me that bell curve. <laughs> yeah. I think like the PSAs we usually give out is um, your best lead is always going to be word of mouth one of your clients that's yes. so happy they tell all their friends and post on social yes so make sure your house is in order before you do any of this and i think you're the best person we found in the industry for those sort of teachings courses classes mm -hmm. how to get your, your house in order how to get your services menu up and banging and all that it so it still remains true like that is your foundation you do need to start there and make sure that is there before yeah. you you press on yeah i think Oh, go ahead. I was, I was going to say, let's just talk about, let's break down some of these things. Cause I, I know we talked about, uh, or we mentioned claiming your listing. And before we hit record, you were, you said some stat about how many listings were unclaimed. Can we go into that a little bit more for people who maybe don't even know what their listing is or that they have to claim them? Because I yeah. know that that's like, that's a game changer right there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Google has called the Google, my business area different names over the past 15 years, so long as we've been using it. Right now they call it Google My Business. So look, um, if you're not sure if you have ownership of your Google My Business listing, or you're brand new and you've never set one up, it's pretty easy. Just go to Google and type in Google My Business <laughs> and you'll find out really quick. Or And um, that's why they pay you the big bucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Or claim my Google my business listing. If you type that in the Google, I mean it. They Google they is very it, good at making it yeah. so easy. They want you to claim it. Yeah. they and want you to claim the, it. This is the when you guys what we're talking about. Like when you Google a place or a spot, and there's like pictures that come up, and it says your website link, the phone number, like all of that kind of stuff. If you're not claiming that listing, right. I mean that's there's all kinds of like crazy pants things that can happen if you yes. don't claim that listing. We're going to talk about some of those crazy mm -hmm. pants things too. And I like that you use the word crazy pants. pants. Crazy pants. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we use that around our home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like the purpose of it, where we're kind of the subject. Um, sure. Oh, so <laughs> we were talking about this earlier. I was like, Hey Jared, do you want to lead? But I guess I'll leave this. So, Jared and I have wanted to do a digital product for a long time and we had written a ridiculously long script and it just wasn't sitting right with us uh, until recently where I said, you know what, I think we're trying to do too much and we need to start with a basic product that can go in, in many areas. So this is how we came up with this digital product is for Google and this is where we, everyone asks us, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And this is the first step. So this information we created and we're putting it in a digital product. Yeah. And the cool thing about it is if you learn how Google works and how this works, 
it translates very easily over to Yelp system. If you use something like TripAdvisor, um, you know, even some of the things for Facebook. So it's not like you're just only learning principles for Google. Like mm. a lot of these other websites like Yelp just straight copy them. Mm. Yeah. So this is your first step is you, you get Google figured out and then you can just keep climbing that ladder and get more and more figured out where, you know, it's not good. You don't know everything and you don't want to know everything when you start. You shouldn't because you get too overwhelmed and then you don't do it. So yeah. we feel like this is the best way to start for anyone because um, we don't we find most people haven't checked all these boxes. Yeah, it's um, so 52 percent is the stat are unclaimed. So make sure you claim yours. And then the, there's some crazy. It takes stat. like two minutes. It's not oh, like a hard yeah. thing. So claim your listing, upload photos, right? Like. We'll get into that. What yeah. I would say is the next problem is like it's something like 80 to 85 percent of all Google My Businesses that are claimed are not are like filled out 50 percent, like 50 percent or less. You know, finish it. <laughs> Don't ADD on us. Just finish it. Yeah. Yeah. So there used to be this this show on MTV called Pimp My Ride. Do you remember this? I know. I remember the name. I don't think I watched that show. I think I watched Punk was the show. Wasn't that on MTV? Well, yeah. I think because he, I think he had a song in his band. I think that's probably why you might have. Okay. Knew about Pimp My Ride, but the, they would take these. The whole cars. premise of the show is yeah. to take this old car and make it this masterpiece. They'd so someone off the street be like, "Hey, you want to pimp your ride?" And someone's got like a beige, like '89 Honda Civic, and they're like, "Yeah, go for it." Like it's not getting any better for me. And this like 20 something year old guy comes into this amazing car, just pimped out that he is like, would have cost, you know, thousands of dollars. And it's a cool show. It was a cool show. It was so great. are you going to yeah. tell us how to pimp our Google listing? Yes. yes. <laughs> we need to pimp your Google. Although I hate that word. Like it's. I know it's an awful word. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll dress up your Google. Uh, Fancy your Google. Yeah. Dazzle your Google. Awesome. Oh, you. We'll land on something better. Cool. Um, so the first thing I would say before you deck out your Google, my business, and this is something that you're so good at with your followers, Danielle fans, is good at. Yeah, is making sure that they lay out their target persona yes. and their target consumer. So important. That best customer. So I, I remember seeing you providing some tools for your yeah. followers through that. Yeah. So it's understanding your ideal client avatar, your ideal client, whatever you want to call it. But the thing is the best way to do this is first look at what you enjoy doing. What treatments do you like doing about best? You know, yeah. who are your favorite yeah. clients? What lights you up? And I, so many estheticians have this shiny object syndrome of like, oh, yeah. I want to do hydrofacial. I want to do lash lifts. I want to do spray tan. I want to do you know, everything, whatever. There's so many that. amazing yeah. things that you can do in this field. And that's part of what I love about it. But I want you to get as specific as possible because when people Google, and especially now people are Googling, I've noticed people are using voice a lot more. Mm -hmm. So they're saying like, um, spray tan near me, right. Brazilian wax near me. They're not saying awesome esthetician yeah. near me. You know, so <laughs> you want to have or like esthetician who does 17 different services. Right. You want to know like what it is that you are known for, what you enjoy doing the most. Yes. You still can offer those other services if you want to, but your online presence needs to be in your niche. So right. if you are a Brazilian waxer, you want to find out first, are you going to target, you know, older women, younger women, pregnant women, right. like it, it doesn't that, matter, yeah. you know, like speak, yeah. figure out who you're speaking to so that your imagery, the fonts that you're using, the colors that you're using, the way that you're speaking to them, all of that needs to show up on your Google claim your business, right? You know, it's on all of your social media profiles, everything. Right. Totally. Yeah, we actually created a branding guide and we have our customer avatar and Jared and I are, are not like artists in a lot of sense. You know, I think creative we are, but not like colors and art. So we were actually making a booth for a trade show and we were trying to de design something and went, what are we doing? We just need to give our branding guide all these rules we've already established. Just don't try to re 
make your rules. Just get your customer avatar, maybe your colors, like you're saying, your branding, get it down, put it in a book. And whenever you're like, what do I put here? Start with that customer, your branding. This can be something super easy to do with like a secret Pinterest board. Yes. There you go. Everybody exactly. just use my dog that keeps walking in the background. I'm like, nobody's saying anything, but this fluff ball yeah. keeps going back and forth. I think I'm used to it now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that using a Pinterest board to kind of pick different yeah. things. And then, you know, once you figure that out, then go to Canva, just create a board on Canva that is basically like has your hex colors. So if you guys don't know what hex colors are, that's your, like pick the colors that you're using yes. and say, I use black, white, blue, and silver. And right. the shade of colors blue. are great too. Classic colors. Yep. So do that. And it's, it doesn't have to be, I think there's this like oh. thought that spa has to, there she is, <laughs> that spa has to be these orchids and soft right. colors and whatever, but it's really about your brand. Like I, I have to give a shout out to Rejuve, which is a med spa in Fargo, North Dakota. Um, mm -hmm. Melissa Roan is the owner. She's also an esthetician. And she is an amazing number one provider of cool sculpting in the entire U S wow. huge, huge, awesome business owner does consulting, does all kinds of stuff. So check her out if you haven't already, but she has hot pink, hot pink That's is her color. color. And yeah. you, you look at her spot and it's hot pink and she's got these like bubble chandeliers. It is fun. It's super feminine. It's powerful. Yeah. And you know, that's her brand and she's done so well with it. It doesn't have to be the like complicated white yeah. orchid soft, you know, yeah. whatever. And you even you, Elena, way. like your, um, the Elena Mitchell brand, I, that was the first thing when you guys first sent me products so long ago, I was like, wow, this packaging is so different. I love it. I loved the colors and the kind of, it does have like an artistic yes. you know, with the brushing, you know, it looks like kind of paintbrushy, you know, yeah, it is. But yeah. It doesn't have to be what it's like who you're attracting. Another rock star, Giselle, who I talk about all the time, love her. She uses flamingos in all of her branding because yeah. she's all about just like, she's fun. She has like yeah. her, when she gets her nails done, they're all like painted different colors and that's just her personality. You know, right. so she's attracting those type of people to her business. Right. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely. I think we're all on the same page because the next thing I was going to suggest we talk about is the keyword research. So once you have that target persona, that avatar laid out, just making sure that you identify exactly how they would be potentially searching on this thing right, right. here, whether it's voice or typing in. Yeah. Okay. So there's a few things you can do um, to figure it out for free. But I'll go ahead and make it like super easy on everyone. In general, it's Thanks, probably Jared. like your city name or your county name yeah. and the category of your services. I love so it like, when they do that. Yeah. They name it by the city. You know, it's like Dana Point Spa, Dana Point Day Spa, Dana Point Facial, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know. I think, what do you think about parking? Because I feel like a lot of people search for parking as well. Like if you're in a place that par like DC parking is atrocious. Uh Hmm. So a lot of times like I'll search for a place and I'm going to go to the one that actually has parking. That's not like street parking or meter parking. That's like a nightmare, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a place in Google, my business where you can specify parking or no parking. parking. And I right. think that's huge. Yeah. And that's part of the making sure you get in there and deck everything right. out. Answer all the questions. So part of that is identifying these keywords. I recommend people write them on their board right next to their, avatar or this or that and i'd come up with 10 to 15 that you think people are searching you might want to ask friends or family because sometimes we're so far in it like in it we can't see outside of it so it might not be what you think and they also might be spelling it like esthetician that's yeah. the, you know some people spell it different different mm -hmm. words differently. and it could be skincare it could yeah. be One brown word, spots different. yeah there's a few ways you can search for free and identify your suspicions of what you sketched out yes. from surveying your friends and racking your brain. Um, one thing you can do that not a lot of people know about is you just simply open Google on your desktop and type in your main 
what you consider your main search term is, Dana Point Spa, it will actually autofill 10 to 15 suggestions. Mm-hmm. So what people don't realize is a lot of those. They'll type it slow because the people are just yeah, typing. Yeah. Don't hit enter. Just type it and wait and you'll wait for those suggestions. You'll see it's like almost like a drop down. I like to recommend something kind of similar because um, a lot of times estheticians will say, I don't know what to post about. I don't know what to do for social content. So I say, go to YouTube and start to type in questions yeah. and see, and you'll get this listing of like all mm-hmm. these things that people search for with acne. Yeah. Yeah. Yelp does the same thing. And so people are clear. Google owns, obviously Google My Business, they own YouTube, they own Chrome, and they own Google Maps. They own a lot of entities. Didn't they buy Waze recently too? I think they even own Waze now. Waze is actually, um, Waze has always been owned by Google. It's their beta version where they test everything out and then send it into Maps. Uh, So they do all their, like the developers and all the nerds. They do all their stuff in ways, and then the features that they like, they put into Google Maps. I learned that from my hubs. So I did not know. That. I was going to say you've got some insider information. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to tell me like it was something else. I was like ready for top secret info. There's no, no, I don't know any top secret info. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty more free keyword tools you can use, but in the amount of time we have today, starting with those is generally how I start, and it's like. It's the quickest way to go from zero to hero, I think. So write those on the board and then start decking out your listing. So here's where we get into talking about address, phone number, website. So the number one mistake that I see people making that shows that them, that shows either below the one to three spot ranking is when they don't type their citation info into Google and then consistently use the exact same info on their website and mm-hmm. other citation sites like Facebook, Yelp, TripAdvisor, on down the list. Okay, so to further clarify, you need to have, if, if you're one location, yeah. you need to have one address, one phone number, one website, and it needs to be typed in exactly the same across these entities Otherwise, Google will not count them. They need to count for your listing because they show Google that your site in your Google My Business page has more authority. If your site and your page have more authority, you're going to rank higher. So very important, you actually have to really, really check to make sure that you're being consistent across all directories. Does that make sense? It does, and I was just gonna, add and kind of get your insight. So I always recommend, so I'm a big fan of blogging and I will tell estheticians like, Hey, even if you're just doing a Facebook live, you know, leverage your time, download the video, upload it, create it as a blog, you know, send it to Rev to get the transcript done and put that under there. But you're saying also in the keywords and the tags, like at the bottom, visit us at such and such spa. Here's our phone number. Here's our website. Doesn't, doesn't, um, do, sorry to interrupt, but doesn't, doesn't the, like in the world of SEO, that's getting updated to these directories that live in internet land. And Google goes and checks all those directories for how frequently pages are being updated and new content is there. So that's really the, the main purpose behind blogging is to update your site regularly so that Google sees this is active, relevant in this particular area. Google loves new content, you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. And they look at the same things when they look at your Google My Business. So the next thing you need to pay attention to is as you're filling out every single field available, unless it's totally irrelevant to your business. Would they leave it blank or they put like not available or not applicable? I'm not quite sure because they change it from time okay, to time. Okay. I'd probably default on, there shouldn't be much that you leave blank, mm. um, but it'll be. What if it's obvious. like smoking? It, no smoking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay, I'm trying like, to think of something else. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it might not. The most important thing is as you're filling out these fields, you need to be referencing those keywords you just collected. Okay. Because you're going to be you're going to have opportunities to um, enter a description, which right now I think is 350 words or characters. There's going to be some areas where you can sort of write out about your services. You're going to have your menu on there. 
Um, there's photos, videos, there's all sorts of opportunities. Use those keywords in your description, use them everywhere you can without sounding stupid, right? Mm -hmm. And um, even name your pictures after your keywords. Like the more those keywords show up in a natural way in your Google My Business, the higher you're also going to rank in Google My Business. Now, how much does reviews on Google play into your listing? Um, it might be if it's like, if listing is like one of the most important things, the next most important thing is reviews. Yes. So, so one of my um, spa retail rockstar students, she is one year old in business. She's on the first page of Google. And what she has done consistently is send a handwritten thank you note and invite them in, say, thank you so much for your, you know, coming in for the treatment, add something personal bring this card in for 15% off your next service when you leave a review on Google. So a lot of people are like saying, leave us a review, but they're not designating where. Yeah. You have to tell them exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you tell them exactly what to do, you know, then all of her rankings are, all of her listings are, our reviews are on Google, right. which I think is the most powerful one. And so yeah, so yeah, she's been. If you need leads, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's she's done incredibly well for herself in one year in business, being on the front page mm -hmm. of Google. Yeah, so um, I think what we should do is first I'll talk about different ways that in the past we've gotten reviews, and then Elena, you should break down how to respond to reviews, especially negative reviews, because I think. You know, that, that, that could be a whole nother episode. <laughs> we do. We have like a whole module. One of our modules is just reviews and what to do. Cause I, I yeah, I think that's probably a struggle. If now then you're, you've done all the work and you're in business. Now you're going to have to, you will get a negative review at some point. It's just inevitable because it's life and life isn't perfect. Um, referencing back to those 10 to 15 keywords that you collected. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a ninja tip is if you're able to ensure that clients leave an image and are utilizing maybe one or two keywords in those reviews. And then you log in and respond to the reviews as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And you use another one or two of those keywords. It's going to help you immensely. Okay. The pictures and the reviews with keywords help immensely. And then guess what? What are some, let's, let me just break this down. What are some examples of keywords? Like, are you thinking of like Dana point? Are you thinking of, Brazilian wax? Are you thinking no. of parking? I would probably do a variety of like location services. Um, it might be even a key term like anti-aging or facials or yeah, Dana Point, uh, massage, um, best lashes, you know, uh, natural, organic. If there's something like that that you offer that's very specific. Um, to what you do. I'm um, trying to think of anything else like sugaring versus non-sugaring waxing. Like I probably do a variety of, you know, a range of things, mm -hmm. of the keywords, not just, if you just only did location, well then people are probably not just going to say Dana Point. They might say Dana Point lash extensions. Mm -hmm. They'll say, I was searching for the best Dana Point lash extensions day spa in the Orange County mm -hmm. and I came across spa Elena and I had an amazing experience blah, 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 blah. and then you see that review and you can hook up Google my business so it goes directly to your phone which we're going to talk about in a, in a minute and respond to them right there um, but the sooner you can respond with another heartfelt thank you and oh my gosh I love this blah 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 and more I think we're even seeing that in social media is like the likes are not mattering as much it's the engagement so the more comments and, and not it. even just emojis, but it's like, is there actual connection happening right. here? And those are the posts. Quality over quantity. Yeah. The, the engagement. Mm -hmm. And um, something I learned from Neil and that, you know, I, we're trying to work on our social media is asking for comments, asking for likes. If you agree with using, you know, peptides, as a daily part of your skin routine, 
uh, like and leave a comment. You know, he's always asking and telling them what to do. And that's what he always recommends. And then posing questions and giving them a chance to engage. If you're just making statements all the time, people are like, all right, they might read it, but you're not giving them the opportunity to engage with you, to like it. Yeah, to, to make like it a conversation. Exactly. Yeah. So that's something that we're working on too. When we do our social media posts, everyone gets it right. And I'm like, there's no question. I'm like, how are they going to engage? We're not telling them what to do. And you mentioned something about content. So are my blog posts, whenever I do a blog, we always do an Instagram post. And people love it because it, they know that it's like we give them a snippet of good content, a chance to interact, notifying them. Oh, the, and they can go from my homepage, you know, or from my, excuse me, Instagram, like my feed, my, what's that one? Homepage of Instagram. Click on a bio link to get to the blog post mm-hmm. and then they can read that. And that always gets a ton of engagement, all of my blog posts because of that unique content. We do that with the podcast too. It's, I I think anything that you can do to leverage your time. So for our podcast, we, you know, we have an actual like blog posting that has all the show notes and everything. We do a video on IGTV. We do a video on Facebook. We upload the video to YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's all the same amount of time. I'm here chatting with you guys, but it's still like, you know, it's going to all these different channels, which helps create consistency and a level of professionalism. And that like with the technology available today, even if you're a one woman show, solo, you have the power to be in all of these places without, I mean, you're like a team of 15, you know, with the technology available. Okay, guys, we are back. Sorry for those of you who are watching the video, but this is mom life. (laughs) <laughs> my dog was walking around in the background so we had to relocate so sorry for the little introduction or the little yeah. interruption jared you were talking <laughs> you hey if you guys listen to the last podcast episode with jared and elena they get it done right you started your business over a hot dog yeah basically <laughs> so like yeah moving locations because random dogs and babies are in the background oh, today. You just, you just gotta normal. You know, adjust, pivot, make it work. Yeah, that's yeah. what you gotta do. Get it's stuff normal. done. Yeah, um, when our kids interrupt our live videos on like Amazon and Facebook, we just keep going. We just go with it. <laughs> Hold on, I'll get you some more crackers in two seconds. Yeah. Go ask your father. He's, he's My fears when they come ask me when I'm doing something and Jared's sitting right there, go, your dad is literally right there. And they kind of just look at me like, I'm, all, I'm busy right now. <laughs> with your 10 phones. I will never forget that post that you had like so many phones oh. and Elena's on the other side and you're just like ready to go live. <laughs> like, phones. Yeah. Talk about multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> Throw another one in there. <sighs> so yeah. Okay, so why does Google matter again? <laughs> okay, so what is Google in business for? They're in business for the same reason as to make money. All right, so um, essentially they make more money. Essentially they make more money when people come to your website that they found through Google and they stay on your website. That's Google My Business, right? Or even your own website, if you can get people to stay on your own website and hang out there and then take the appropriate action and then come back, Google likes that Mm -hmm. because that means that you're helping promote Google's cause, which is to keep them coming back and keep them using Google and stay on Google. So how all this plays out is if you can accomplish that, like when people click on the term data point spa, they click on your listing and they stay there the longest, and they book it, Mm -hmm. that's the right signals that you want to show Google. Therefore, Google will rank you higher. And the same thing applies for your own website. And the same thing applies to Yelp and so on and so forth, because they all sort of copy Google, right? Mm -hmm. So what I would say is when you're filling out that Google My Business, when you're doing photos, when you're doing um, videos, this or that, start thinking in the mindset of that target consumer found me through one of these keywords. How do I get them to hang out here and have fun? and participate, okay? So how that can sort of like, I don't know, manifest itself is like, don't just post a video, like post a really cool video where you're giving them like a personal tour, showing personality. Um, in the photo areas- People love before and after. They, they love before and after, she's right on it. 
Um, any trending services or facials, cryo, oxygen, this yeah, or that, you can. make sure to show that you do. And, and videos are great for keeping people on site for longer, right? So if you can show through video, that's awesome. Um, you've probably given people the spiel. And it doesn't have to be you on the video. I know right. a lot of people are really worried about being on camera, but it doesn't have to be you. You can actually film your client or your patient, or you can film even like if you're just starting out and you're bringing a lot of the companies will have videos that are already done for you. I'm not saying that that's the best way, but if you have no other options, right. just put it up there and right. you know, start there. Totally, totally. Um, post infographics, they don't even have to be your own. You can give credit to whoever made it, but you want people to stay there and read and learn. You can post, um, post your tripwire offer mm -hmm. as a photo in one of right. your photos, right? right. And then a uh, lot of people- I think we should clarify what a tripwire is. That's a big marketing term. Yeah, yeah. So say it. Sorry, what was that? Is it, tell them tell what tripwire is. What's a tripwire? Yeah, um, tripwire. So like I've heard you talk a little bit about like um, free brow wax with the facial or we used to do how we started. I think it was mm -hmm. like a $49 facial for like first, a first time, time client. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always made it undeniably amazing offer that it's, they could. It's an introductory offer to get them to know, like, and trust you. It's something that they can't refuse. Get so, them yeah, if it's, it's low enough, most of us, if we're unsure, we figure, well, this is usually the mindset. If I hate it, it was only $49 and, you know, not a big deal. Um, but if I love it, this could be amazing. And I, I only offer that one time first time. And then after that, it would obviously move up. And I'm all about membership facials too, and programs that to create loyalty. I feel like that is just a win-win for both people and both parties, but we'll get into that. But yeah, the tripwire, whatever is your kind of your first time offers, you're, you're tripping them over, tripping the wire, trip them, trip them, make them fall into your business. Uh, undeniable. Fall in love with you. <laughs> fall in love with you. Yes. That's what I think of. When I think about wire and you're tripping. Do not physically in the trip door. anyone. No. <laughs> <laughs> Start there. Start with something. Yeah. If you're facials, if you're waxing. Um, okay. One local uh, woman here, uh, she is running a great spray tanning a business. I actually thought it was a franchise because of how well she has um, things set up and organized. You know, my text messages, her website. She had a few locations, and I thought it looked so well branding. It was so well organized and well thought out that I thought, well, this has some big money behind it. I don't know. It's privately owned, and she started one location. Now she's got, I believe, three. And I uh, was looking for spray tan, and we are you purchase a spray tan, but you get, as a first time client, you always get two. And I thought that was so smart because spray tanning can be really tricky and hard to get right the first time. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, for the first time offer, we'll say it was $49 or $39. I get two. So I haven't been back yet, but I'm planning to. So I went to my first one and I loved it. And they sent me the reminder, you have a second one, you can come in any time. And it was great. And I thought that was really smart for spray tanning. So you get two for the price of one. I'm going to definitely come back. They have add-on services, of course. You know, would you like to exfoliate beforehand? Would you like to blah, 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 blah. There was all these other things. So anyways, figure out what's going to work for your service that's going to be motivating for that client. Totally. Yeah, and Google even has a section for coupons too. Like, I don't like the word discount, coupons, this or that. Yeah, promos. I, I like I'm to say promotions. A, yeah, I'm a huge offers, fan of like offering special. something to get them through yeah. the door. I'm not saying do it every single time or whatever, but um, let's get people in the door. So use that coupon section in Google to post the tripwire and also make an image out of your tripwire and use it in the photos. And February and April are going to be our slowest months, FYI. February. You probably, February. If you haven't already figured it I think out. it depends on where you're at in the country. I think that really depends on, because in Hawaii, it's totally different. In Hawaii, it's September, October, April, May. In the Those Northeast. Mm -hmm. Let's see, April was in there because of taxes. Taxes. <laughs> uh, so April's taxes. Oh, taxes. And, and I'll say maybe in, in, the, in the States, um, we've surveyed this, uh, February and April are, are two lowest months historically across the board most likely. But yeah, if you're in Hawaii, you're definitely more of an anomaly there. And you got to look at different trends. In different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. So like in um, New England, 
they're, they can be a lot slower in the summer because it's basically like nine months of winter. So when it's Mm -hmm. summer, people are like, ah, I'm going on vacation. I'm going out. I'm going to, you know, so it's just like, there's going to be little micro areas that you have to know. You can't just 100% trust that, oh, this is automatically going to be this way. Like know your community, know what events are going on in your community because all of those can have impacts. Yeah, take a look, but know those months. The reason, for sure, know those times. The reason Lena is bringing those up is because there's a section um, in Google My Business now where you can post like you can on social media. So you should be updating this Google My Business. I would say almost as much as you update your social because it's a copy paste really for the type of post that you're putting on social. I didn't Google know that. that. Is it what was the um, what was their plus? Was it like Google Plus or something that they? I think they got rid of it. Yeah, Google Plus, man. I think it's gone now. This is only in Google My Business. It allows you to post your tripwires, your seasonality mm-hmm. specials. Okay. Um, and sort of but know that, that, whatever it is, know that, and you will find some commonalities when you talk, when you look at your area. You'll find that. You'll find, and it's historically. I mean, we've been doing this. I mean, my my parents had beauty salons, spas, and services for forty years. And it's interesting that I remember their months and their dailies and their month totals. And even though I'm primary, we're primarily e-commerce, there's some season, season, uh, similarities that are very interesting to consumer purchasing and services. Uh, but yeah, look in your area and see whatever your trend is. You'll be able to identify it. And it's really nice to plan and prepare financially, promos and specials, you know, what you're going to do, get ready for that. Google's yeah. Yeah, Google's going to love it. They see updating that information as mm-hmm. well. Okay, so, so what's next? Were we going to talk about reviews? Yeah, I would say map out your top three competitors. And we don't even like to call them competitors because we think your competitors should be your friends, honestly. Like there's too many people in the world for you, us to be fighting over facial clients. Like in our city alone, dollar industry. there's like 100,000 people and such a small percentage go get facials in the city. Like there's so much opportunity, right? So um, write down your top three competitors' amount of reviews. And basically your goal is to eventually surpass them. If you have the mo- more reviews and your reviews are higher quality, obviously they're going to rank you the highest. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's really tangible advice too. Just like Google, you know, facial in your city and look at the top three. Yeah. And look at those. I mean, that can be a great starting point. Mm-hmm. Sure. And, you know, it can be a little daunting if there's a big hotel in your area and you're a brand new business because they have 300 reviews, but you're not really competing with the hotel, I would say. Yeah. yeah. So don't worry about that. Try to find the businesses that are a little more directly competition right. and focus on those. And by the way, usually it's only like 20 or 30. Depending on where you, where you live, probably, as far as reviews. Yeah, it's really not as many as you think in general. Like you can, you know, and that sounds like a lot, but you can average just making a decent effort, um, two or three reviews a week. Yeah, and you know, take a couple of months, and there you go. And one thing that I've recommended in the past, um, so I know Google doesn't like reviews done on site. So, like, if you are having physically location, because they know where you are, right? Because they own that. Google Maps. Mm-hmm. Um, but sending in your follow-up, um, you know, a request for a review, but then also quarterly dividing up your list, your email list of your clients, looking at those who haven't just say, if you haven't left a review, we would so pre- just sending out an email campaign, email, text message, physical card, postcard, mm-hmm. to yeah. invite them to review. And And that way you're not getting like this massive, like if you have a thousand people on your list, you're not like getting a ton of reviews all at once. You can break it down that it's like. You want it to be a natural flow. It wants to look natural. I use the word organic only for that word organic. Um, And that's something that we found and that we've had to uh, figure out how we have a nice, a nice uh, line of reviews coming in. Um, and so you might want to set up like a bi-weekly thing for yourself to email or mm-hmm. contact. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like weekly or weekly might be too much if you're a sole proprietor. I mean, I'm trying to think about back in the day when I was. I think in the, sort of, in the thank you card, just like. Our yeah, that's thank you card. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that is perfect. You can follow up. You can send out the text, the email, but kind of get into a habit routine, maybe bi-weekly. Um, how are we doing on time? 
Uh, we have about 10 more minutes. Okay, so I say 10 seconds. as long as it's cool with you too, um, like, we everyone <laughs> eventually gets a negative review. So yeah. I think we should spend a little bit of time um, talking about that. And I feel like you're really good at when we win. <laughs> Like, so I had people. to because people are like, we have a negative review. What do we do? Well, first off, we, you spoke about always responding to reviews, positive or negative, as quick as possible. That Google likes to see that. So I think it's easy to respond to a positive review. A negative review, you don't want to leave it hanging. And we talk about this in detail in the digital product. Everything that we're talking about today, we go into a, like a step by step module for you in the digital product that we're gonna launch here soon. And the negative review, the best thing to do, in my opinion, uh, in person or, or online, but we'll just I'll stick to online Google, uh, is you, you wanna address it and you wanna apologize. Apologizing, uh, just saying, I'm sorry that you had this experience today. Don't be afraid to ask them more questions. Like, I would like to um, discuss this with you. Do you remember? Um, who you saw, would you, would you mind emailing me? I would like to, um, because I find out um, if you don't get more information, you can't really solve the problem. And I teach my girls here and, and I said, don't be afraid to ask questions because sometimes people are vague or you're reading it one where maybe they're, they're miscommunicating, especially if it's online. And so sometimes we have found out that we've had negative reviews from competitors who claim that they are a customer and they purchased a product and they had um, it broke and they never received something. Well, first off, we don't just not ship products or give people products. Like that's just not the business that I run. So I want to find out what's going on. So please give me your order number. Uh, I can look this up. Uh, we've had people not have an order number because they weren't a customer. They were just wanting to put a bad review. Now that can happen. Uh, also, you can get people who are just angry and upset. I think, you know, people have a bad day. It might not even be your fault as the owner. Maybe you have someone that's not well trained. And I think admitting, apologizing, offering something to make it up. Um, I think it, it's very important to do that. And you'll find that if you go through those steps, most people, I'd say nine out of 10, um, you can kind of talk them off a ledge. And usually they get into a, a better place. Uh, they feel like they've been heard. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Uh, it sounds like so-and-so did not finish her training. I'm personally going to see to it that she finishes her reception training to ensure that this does not happen to you or anyone else again. May I offer, I'd like to offer you a complimentary facial, refund them for their, you know, whatever terrible service. You kind of have to make that judgment call based on, you know, what happened. Uh, and then often we ask, and we are usually successful if we ask them if they would consider, since we, you know, we feel like we're in a good place now, yeah, would you consider removing that negative review? And often a lot of people are. Sometimes there's even just misunderstanding and no one's at fault. So that's what I would say about the bad reviews. There's a couple of things I want to add in there. Number one, I don't think it's always a bad thing to have a negative review on your listing if you've resolved it properly. Right. And exactly. so I think that that's totally fine to see like, oh, if something negative does happen, then Not the end of the world. No. yeah, like it's, it will happen at some point, someone's going to have a bad day, but like, Hey, look how this person showed up and wanted to resolve that. So I think that that is awesome. And I think that also negative reviews or experiences can highlight areas in your business that you need to improve. Exactly. It's, it's constructive feedback and you have to say, okay, how can I, all right, thank you for pointing this out. I'm going to put a system in place that this doesn't happen again, or this is an area that we need to look at. And so you have to like, it's really hard to separate the no, personalization person. of it. Right. If you really look at it objectively and say, all right, I can see why that happened or, you know, and like, here's what I'm going to do to fix it. And so it's only going to make you better. Right. Absolutely. Um, and, you, you know, you don't want to respond. You want to respond soon, but you don't want to respond heated. Yeah. Heated. So calm yourself down. And the goal here is to bring them from a 10 down to a five. So yeah. you can offer to 
alleviate the situation and then, hey, um, you know, would you consider altering their view, changing it from a one star to a three or four or five as mm-hmm. opposed or just remove it? And, and studies have shown that people tend to trust businesses a little bit more when there's not like that perfect five star you know, deal. So if it's just under five, it looks a little more realistic. Yeah. People will read, they'll see the negative review, they'll see you only have a few or whatever, and that you fixed them each time. And they're like, okay, well, this person actually cares. Yeah, 100%. So, okay, let's do a quick recap. Um, I know I'm super excited for you guys to launch this course. I know that you're planning on doing it at where at Face and Body. Um, well, with your permission, we are thinking we could offer anyone who's listening or anyone in your group a special sort of, you know, beta sort of pre-exclusive pre-launch. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's up to you, though. <laughs> I, I think they would love it. You know, if, if anyone is, I mean, people love beta, right? Because you get it at like a super, right? yeah. super discounted price, which is amazing. So, um, yeah, why not? If they want it, then it's available. And if not, then that's cool too. Um, but we will provide all of the links under here, but let's do, I just want to do a quick recap of what we covered. Cause I know that we always tend to go in kind of all these well, expressions, yeah. <laughs> but number one, claim your listing. Number two, complete your listing, like every single thing. Yeah. Number three, Focus on reviews, get reviews to Google. Number four, respond to negative reviews. What did I miss? And respond to positive. positive. And positive. Okay. We talked a lot about tripwire and sort of what to offer. First offer. You know. That's kind of like a little bonus info. Yeah. But um, okay. in closing, I could, I could talk about four things you could implement on Google My Business if we're done with the summary that can kind of give them an edge over everyone else if you'd like. Awesome. Okay. In, a, in the fast paced mode. <laughs> All right. Number one, add a booking button. You can do it now. <gasps> um, that is awesome. I didn't know that. Download the Google My Business app on your phone. You can add a booking bu- button. You can put it schedule. You can integrate it with That's your awesome. booking software. That's okay. Awesome. awesome. Um, Love it. Next, you can turn on direct messaging. People can now message you through Google and you can respond. And that works the same with reviews and negative reviews. So it's kind of weird. You're getting texts now through Google My Business, but it's just another touch point where someone's driving in their car. Yes. They find you. They can ask a quick question. And you can respond to the question, okay? And the third thing is questions and answers. Those are another sort of underutilized area of Google My Business where you can use those keywords. You can ask questions. You can have friends ask questions, and you can answer them with a, that keyword-rich content. And one great place to look for questions to answer is a free website called answerthepublic.com. And then the last thing is we kind of touched on this, but you can post on Google My Business now like you can post on social media. So I would make an effort to post on there at least once a month or every time you post on social, Google's going to love that. Awesome. So if you guys want to take advantage of a beta opportunity, be sure to, we've got the links below this uh, podcast episode if you want to learn more from Jared and Elena. Um, also, where can they find you on social? Social, excuse me. So on social, it's Skin Care by Elena. Elena's A-L-A-N-A. And uh, that's our name for us, uh, Facebook and Instagram. And let's see. It's a digital product we decided is going to be released on my own website, which is beefysites.com. And Beefy is my nickname. And I forget. Very spa. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It is very spa. Yeah. We were thinking maybe doing like Beefy and Babe, but yeah, we're sticking with Beefy. Well, the thing about the product is it's going to apply to anyone who has a small business, chiropractors, massage, restaurants, bars whatever so we're going to sort of start by launching it to the industry that we know and familiar Mm -hmm. with but we don't want to necessarily limit it to that so we're going to try that url for a while see how it goes but yeah Mm -hmm. you're right it's (laughs) it is yeah but if you go to the website we're we're making it look you know female friendly for sure (laughs) very good very good awesome well you guys it's always a pleasure to hang out and connect and learn from you guys. I know that everyone's going to love this episode. So thank you so, so much for your time and we'll be in touch soon. 
Thanks, Daniela. Awesome. Thanks, Daniela.